Nicola Sturgeon has been reported to police after being filmed without a face mask on it. Uh, footage uh, on it. Footage of the on social media shows the first minister without a mask in an East Kilbride barber shop, which she had visited on the election campaign trail. She has, however, posted footage of the visit on her own Instagram account with her mask on. She denies breaking the rules, and I should say uh, that the police have not prosecuted her either. But do we really care? The British public have been subjected to countless days of party gate speculation and the Prime Minister's fixed penalty notice. Is there public fatigue <coughs> over politicians being attacked for not following COVID guidance? So for the Great British Debate this hour, I'm asking, is it time to stop caring about COVID rule breaking? I'm joined by former Conservative member of the Scottish Parliament, Brian Monteith. Uh, Brian, thank you for joining me. Uh, Brian, OK, so what's, what is your view about, first of all, the rules themselves? Were they, some of them seemed a little bit non nonsensical, but what, what's your view? Well, my view was uh, that I, I, like many others, probably the majority of people, uh, went along with the initial lockdown because uh, we felt there was a need, and we were told there was a need to protect the NHS so it could have capacity, uh, and nothing else, uh, it could have capacity to deal with what was coming. Uh, but suddenly that, that uh, lockdown to gain capacity became a lockdown to control us. Uh, with all sorts of uh, contradictory restrictions, uh, many of which were, were so so confusing that people didn't know where they, they, they stood. Um, and then it, it, it moved on for years, uh, not just months, but years. Uh, I, I didn't think uh, it was necessary uh, to go beyond that, um, that initial lockdown. And uh, and I think we, we're now seeing that in comparison to other countries, other, other uh, legislatures, jurisdictions that uh, it, it was unnecessary because it did untold damage in other ways, people's mental health, to their cancer treatments and all the rest. Uh, so I, I, I felt it wasn't necessary. And now I think we've, of course, got the absurdity of, uh, of our, our lawmakers breaking their own rules that they made, uh, just showing how stupid uh, those rules were. I mean, a lot of people will agree that the rules are stupid, um, but some of the politicians did break them. So do you think that we should yes. be caring about following, pursuing them because of this? And if so, why? Well, well no, I think, I think they have to take, uh, make, uh, take an example uh, and, and uh, follow the rules they make. I have no doubt about that. Um, what we have seen is uh, evidence come forward about a lot of politicians over a great deal of time uh, for instance, uh, Margaret Ferrier, the SNP MP mm. from Glasgow, who, who travelled on a train with COVID, knowing uh, she had COVID, yeah. um, travelled back and via taxi as well, mm. uh, in September 2020. She's not even been in court yet. It's June, August of this year. Uh, it's absurd it's taken that long. Um, but that's how slow the wheels of justice turn in uh, the SNP Scotland. Uh, but I do think lawmakers should be held to account. That doesn't mean I think they all have to resign all the time for everything. I think if they if they pay the penalty, they, they should should pay that penalty. Uh, but what we had the other day was Nicola Sturgeon demanding demanding that Boris Johnson resign because he'd been fined, and then extending the the mask mandate in Scotland uh, until beyond uh, to you know till today, uh, uh, when when in fact she could have got rid of it there and then, and she broke it. And she broke it. I mean, goodness me. Uh, she went into a barber shop, which isn't guidance, by the way. It is, in fact, the case that it is against the law. And all the other people in the shop, too, are breaking the law, not just Nicola Sturgeon. And, and you know, the police look into it and say nothing wrong was done. Well, that's what, right. She has denied... What police force do we have? She, she has denied police it. What force so, is it? They can it, see it in, in broad daylight with a piece of film with all these people in a barber shop. It's against the law. So very briefly, because your audio is not that great, but very, very briefly then. So do you think politicians, if they, in light of these, that they should be forced to resign? So Boris, do you think he should resign? No, I don't think these are, these are actually resigning issues. Uh, but I do think uh, that they should be held to account uh, because, like everyone else who has broken the law, uh, they too uh, have to pay the penalties. Some people have had huge fines. Uh, and I think it's only right that politicians that, uh, that do that uh, break the law, they should pay the fines too.
Well, Brian, thank you so much for that. That's Brian Monteith. He's a former Conservative member of the Scottish Parliament. Right, well, I'm also joined by Associate Editor of The Spectator, Rod Liddell. Rod, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Rod, what's your Pleasure. view on all of this? I mean, Nicola Sturgeon said she put the mask on after she went in the shop. But if you look at it, he, what, uh, what he did point out was that they, a lot of them weren't wearing masks in any case. What's your view on all of no, that? No, they weren't wearing masks. They weren't wearing masks. She clearly broke the, broke the law, her own stupid law. <laughs> so, so she should be done for it. Uh, I, I think it's complex. Um, I think an awful lot of the anger which came out uh, uh, over Partygate at the beginning of this year uh, was occasioned by two things. Firstly, by the complacency and arrogance of the Conservative government, uh, where they were clearly breaking the law, uh, breaking the rules at every single juncture, multiple occasions, and indeed, uh, in the case of the Prime Minister, uh, not telling the truth about it afterwards. Uh, and I think that was a justifiable anger. But I think there was also an anger there uh, a, a kind of feeling that in 2020 we'd been hoodwinked, uh, and, and if you if you think back to those days, and I I remember them fondly because I rather enjoy lockdowns, uh, but if you think back to March 2020, the strictures which were in place now seem uh, unreal or surreal. Uh, it is it is hard to imagine that we lived like that, uh, and and I think that a lot of people looked at the fact that the, the politicians were not obeying any of the, of the rules as, as this went on, weren't obeying the very rules which they set up for other people to follow, and, th and, and were thinking to themselves, you know, why on earth did I follow them? Why didn't I do what common sense told me I should have done? which was go and see my uh, relatives of, uh, a few hundred yards down the road instead of staying in my house all the time being allowed out only once every two weeks or once a week to do some shopping. I mean, they were remarkable strictures. <clears throat> I abided by them because I thought they were right at the time. But even I had this suspicion, looking back, you know, in January this year, when, when, when Party Gay really hit the headlines, uh, I looked back and thought, was I taken for a mug? And my wife certainly thinks I was. She thought I was quiescent and, uh, and a sheeple. Uh, she, she had no truck with any of it. Uh, but, you know, uh, so I think, I think that anger was in there as well, uh, Nana. Mm. So with that anger, because a lot of people conflate, and I, and I do feel people are conflating it when they yeah. say, oh, well, I couldn't see my relative, or I didn't do this, or I didn't do that, but yet they were breaking yeah. the rules and or my relative died. You know, there was a level of common sense that goes with it. If your relative is dying in a hospital, in some respects, by being told you can't visit them, is alleviating you of the guilt because you may not want to simply because you're scared of catching COVID and dying yourself. So there was a level of that. Surely people can understand that those rules would have were probably the right thing and we kind of chose to follow them. But in the case of things like Partygate and stuff, I mean, I, I think I broke the rules then, if that's the case, and I probably thought I wasn't breaking the rules. Is it reasonable to suppose that uh, perhaps Boris didn't think he was breaking the rules? No, I don't think so. I'm, I'm really sorry, Nana. Uh, you know, uh, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, that had it not been for the invasion of uh, the Ukraine, Boris would no longer be Prime Minister. And I think that probably, given the scale and the number of occasions upon which he broke his own rules, that complacency, arrogance and deviousness deserved uh, him, uh, uh, his resignation. <clears throat> because uh, he infuriated the public and let the public down, and let the public down over the greatest crisis we've, we've had since, uh, uh, since the Second World War. <clears throat> and there really is very, very little that one can say in favour of it. And as I say, you know, back at the time where I was talking to senior MPs who said, well, he won't go now, but he will go in a couple of weeks. There's no question about that. And then, you know, we have the invasion of Ukraine. As Robert Colville was writing in the Sunday Times yesterday, there is one thing which Boris has always had on his side. He is very lucky, both in timing, uh, but also lucky in his enemies. Uh, and I think that's what's happened this time.